Okay, we're going to get to the painting phase, or actually the staining of the rock phase. Now, what comes included in this kit is uh, yellow, brown, and a little container of black. And I suggest uh, shaking it up a little bit uh, before you go ahead and start. I noticed that the brown paint specifically uh, kind of separated a bit. <clears throat> so I'm going to mix it up, make sure it's, uh, you know, it, it, it blends back together. Um, even though they call this yellow, brown, and black, what uh, I like to think of it is uh, more or less uh, umber. And in this kit, we only have the three colors, but you're not limited to three colors. When you get a little bit more advanced, you could add perhaps even a gray. And uh, when we're done staining our rocks, uh, you might even want to use a, a dry brush technique called stipling and uh, get a little uh, a white and just dab whites on the, on the edges for some highlights here. But what we're going to do today is uh, I'm going to now open my paint up here and what comes included in this kit is a little one inch foam brush and the instructions indicate that you're going to take your foam brush and you're going to uh, fill these little reservoirs up, two of them half full for the yellow and the umber color and about three quarters full for the black and that's because we're going to make a wash out of this. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take uh, my brush here and I'm going to dip it in the yellow color and I'm going to mix it in the water really good and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to randomly, they call it the leopard spotting technique, is on these rocks here, I'm just going to dot in a random pattern uh, one third of the face of the rock. And don't worry about if it runs down. Uh, again, when we get to the point where we use the black wash, it's going to uh, blend these colors up a little bit more and uh, get into those crevices and when we add the umber here in a minute it's going to even look more realistic um, oops let me get a little bit more paint going on there and uh, when we add the earth color later on the earth color is really going to make it uh, um, cover up all this uh, anything that that runs down and whatnot I also have here another uh, thing of water just so I could rinse my brush out a little bit. It's not required to do so, but I'm doing it here. Now I've got my water back in. The, I'm going to move on to the umber color or brown. Mix that up a little bit in here. And now I'm going to go back in and randomly dot a couple of things here the rock facings and let's and again don't worry if it runs because we'll we'll end up covering that up later make sure that uh, again it's totally random here there's no set pattern and uh, it's going to look more natural that way and you, we can always go back too if we don't like this uh, we can always add a little bit more. See, I think this uh, brown's looking a little light, so I'm going to add a little bit more paint to my wash here and get back in. And I might touch it up with a little bit more yellow. Oops, I even forgot a rock up here. So I'm going to go back in and let's see, stain some more here. And We'll go back here in a second. Now I'm going to wash my brush out. Dab a little bit off. That'll get a little bit more yellow. Put the yellow back in. Okay, I'm going to go back again and add some random. Uh, again, call leoparding. Get back into some of these spots that I previously missed. Try to get as much of the white. Uh, that I don't want showing and again when the when we add the black wash here in a few minutes the black wash is really going to make it blend so get a little quiet here sorry about that 
get underneath a little bit. And I think I might want to add a little bit more uh, brown again to some of these things. I like it a little bit darker. So let me grab a little bit more of the brown paint here. Mix it in with what's the remaining of my water. I'm not using very much at all, actually. There we go, some nice dark. And we'll get back in some of these areas here that I previously missed. Darken, darken some of this up. And oops, get right in there. Get, make sure I get underneath. Boom, and boom. And uh, let's see here. Oh man, I'm actually using quite a bit here. You can always go back too when this is uh, dry and you're not too happy. Let's say you want to add some more yellow. Uh, feel free to add more yellow if you want to make it uh, add some other colors in here. Like I said, maybe some slate gray, uh, maybe some uh, white, maybe a rust. Maybe you have a darker color brown, maybe like more like a mud. I actually have a color called Mississippi Mud, which I really like, and uh, that looks pretty. Okay, so now, and even though this looks a little not pretty right now, I, I guarantee you it'll, it'll look much better when we get, uh, when we add this wash here in a second. So now I'm dipping in the black and I'm really mixing it in the water. And basically now I want to cover everything. I'm just going to kind of glide my brush over. This is going to bring out the individual look. Oops, wow, I actually probably want some more water. Yeah, that's a little, that's a little dark here. I want to add a little bit more. There we go. And just going to add, add some wash. I still need to, wow. So they're not kidding. You might want to add a lot more water to your blacks. This is just supposed to be a wash and it's actually uh, going quite a bit more than I anticipated so that's not necessarily bad but it's not necessarily good either oh there we go see now that that's a little bit better get some more water in there uh, and now it's kind of going into the cracks a little bit more I might have to come back I probably won't show it on camera but I'll, I'll come back and hit up a couple of a couple of these areas again with some uh, reds and browns One. And just dab it in there again it's a wash it's gonna go in and highlight all the cracks and whatnot it's supposed to blend these colors together a little bit too it's doing an okay job but I think it's a little heavy so I will definitely go back in when this dries a little bit more and try to get a couple a little bit more yellow and oh, on this big rock here I want to make sure that I get underneath. There we go. And try to cover up as much as this area as possible. Again, underneath. And that's okay if I got the ground. I'm going to paint that ground anyway. Uh, I just want to get this black into as many cracks as I can because that's going to be our shadowing element. There. And... Okay, so now I'll go back and I'm going to lighten this up a little bit with some uh, yellow, more of the yellow. Grab a dab of the yellow here and uh, just kind of, there, see, we go, there we go. Kind of bring it back, some of this dark back to life, a little too dark. And there we go. Yeah, it's starting to look a little decent now huh yeah get some some of the yellow back in there and uh, make sure we can highlight some of this that black is going to blend it in and then I'll probably hit it up one more oops I forgot a spot back in there nice get some yellow back up in here and then I'll probably hit it with brown one last time 
So now I'm mixing my brown color a little bit. Add a little bit of water and I'm dabbing the brown and that's going to help that black out a little bit. And it's okay if I'm rubbing it there. Just want to make sure I get rid of as much white as I can. So I got a little yellow, a little brown on the brush. And I'm kind of going back over the black. It's starting to lighten up a little bit more. It's starting to look a little bit more natural. I'm sure it'll look even better here when, when we start adding uh, some other colors. You go back and uh, hit some highlights. I might come back anyway. I might just do the dry brush with the uh, white myself just to take the edge off some of this uh, dark black. But it's turning out pretty good. I'm pretty happy. And don't beat yourself up. It's supposed to look uh, natural and blended. If, it, if you're not happy with it, hey, this is supposed to be about nature anyway. And uh, this is the first time doing this. So, you know, things just paint could always be corrected again later not not a big deal we're just gonna dab kind of randomly around here there we go so I get all my rock facings uh, painted up and it's starting to look pretty decent and I'm just gonna just kind of splotching this around here yeah, make sure I got the edges nice. There we go. We don't want too much of any one thing showing. But uh, yeah, it's actually, now that the, the black is actually starting to dull up a little bit as it dries. And it's starting to look pretty decent. And I really do think we'll come back and we'll hit this up with some highlights here. And anyway, uh, let's get back in and zoom in a little bit for you. You can see that, uh, again, we're going to go over a lot of the area with the earth and paint color. Don't worry about what's running on the rest. Uh, you can't really screw up. Remember, it's one half uh, water to one half yellow, one half water to one half umber, and supposedly three quarters water to uh, one quarter black. But uh, as you can see there, the black is pretty predominant. So uh, I might actually even, uh, like you saw me do, add some more water. So we'll, we'll come back in a few when this dries and uh, we'll take it from there. Thanks. Okay, now it's time to paint our undercoat. In this little container here that came with the kit was our earth undertone. And all it is is a, a non-toxic acrylic pigment that I went ahead and dumped into the tray per the instructions. And then in this empty capsule I've added two capsules worth of water so basically it's a two to one ratio two caps of, or two uh, containers of water to one container uh, of paint so at this point now I've I've mixed it up using my tongue depressor here the same tongue depressor that I use to uh, mix my hydrocal so make sure that you want to keep keep that and uh, I'm going to go ahead and use my uh, foam brush to go ahead and uh, coat the rest of of our model here or our diorama I won't go ahead and bore you with with all of that so uh, I'll check okay, back in so after about 10 minutes of painting this is the finished product as you can see uh, it's a little uh, random. There are some areas that are heavier and lighter than others, and uh, I'm not too worried about that. That's pretty natural. The rocks blended in pretty nicely. Remember, we were talking about that runoff earlier. Uh, that hit a lot of that runoff, and remember, we're going to even hide more of it when we actually add the real landscaping and foam to this. Um, one thing to note is that when... Uh, you're uh, going over the hydrocal. The hydrocal does turn to turn very light. So uh, if you have enough uh, pigment over, go back and and go over on a second coat. In a lot of areas through here, I actually did a second coat, so that would uh, darken up a lot more. The one area that I kind of left uh, a little open, again, is where my lake is going to be. But as you can see, I've kind of tapered it down 
to uh, the banks. I'm not too worried that this is white. If I had some more pigment left over, I'd go ahead and just do it anyway, but uh, uh, it doesn't really matter. We're going to paint this, the bottom of this, a really dark black and some blues and for the base of our lake here. So it doesn't really matter. The, the main key thing here is we want to get rid of as much white as we possibly can, which I think we did. And uh, remember, that was one, one container of uh, pigment to two containers of uh, water mixed up, and I used it all. And uh, this again is the end result. So we're going to go ahead and let this dry and uh, we'll move on. Finally, the last step here, uh, I will do a couple of dry brushing, uh, some highlights on the rock and maybe lighten those rocks up just a tad bit more. I might even add a little gray uh, to that. I, I still think they're a little dark for my taste, but overall it, it turned out pretty good for my first time. So stay tuned.